We're sitting there at the beach. And all of a sudden, this idea kind of dawned on us, like, what if this is possible? If the stars align and we got lucky, this could actually come to life. Dude, this is it. This is it right here. If they get a wave. But I don't think we had any idea what we were about to get ourselves into. I mean, the whole idea in the beginning, it was just this sort of trip with friends. We wanted to go out and explore this area that we had been researching really for, I think, like two to three years. I was on the phone really trying to gather up any willing soul who would come with us. My assistant, Russ, and then we talked to Ben, Wylan, and then we were calling the guys, you know, one after another, trying to kind of hide the fact that this might actually be pretty dangerous. I basically just took two red eyes to get here. It was pretty cold coming from Hawaii to here, so. Justin was in Florida, and I was in New Jersey, and uh, there's a blizzard. <laughs> I got three layers, and we walked outside, and I was still just like freezing. I think the day leading up to this is like, I don't want to go. <laughs> like, I want to go, but I don't want to go. Is that his car? <laughs> <laughs> Are you what? kidding me? He pulled it from a rental car. It's <laughs> cheap. How do you like the adventure mobile? That's some camera gear already. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't be excited to, to join Chris on a journey to Iceland? But at the same time, I had a, a lot of doubt that we could actually pull off some of the shots that he was talking about. In that kind of environment, you're fighting a lot of limitations of not only your body, but the gear and everything involved. Huh. That is a lot bigger of a hill than it looks like. There was some death contemplation there. Maybe if I just dive down off this rock face, it'll all be over. I don't know how this is gonna work out. I'm uh, gonna hang over the edge here and try to get a shot of the ice cracking. A little further this way. Oh, day one, not good. Broke a wing? Yeah, broke a few things. Taylor, my wife, who both of us have been on all kinds of big mountain Himalayan adventures, but this was something a little bit different. We were packing our bags the night before, throwing in our heaviest weight puffy jackets, being pretty confused about exactly what we were getting into. You okay? Yeah. Did it cut you? Are you bleeding? I don't think so. I was going to press record on the camera, and when I was bending down, my puffy jacket hit the obscure series of commands that you have to do to power up this drone. It powered up and started to take off, so I, I batted it down. Oh, fuck. Oh, man. It was pretty much emergency mode after that. After the stitches, after the hospital, I think it definitely made me question if I, I should go home. I don't know what that is. I basically didn't want to be the link that made the film not as powerful as it could be, I made the decision to stay. From the very beginning of the project, we kind of built the whole thing around the fact that we were gonna be there with 18 hours of darkness a day. And being there in the middle of winter, there was really only one camera we could use to shoot in this low of light. So when I traveled to Iceland, I brought with us maybe four to five A7S IIs. The A7S II was our, was our go-to, it was our workhorse. Even under the most heinous of conditions, this thing performed, whether there was snow encrusted on the front of it or salt spray hitting it, or we're at the beach and it's negative 20. When I'm like towards the end, my finger, I couldn't even press the button on the camera. I was just like gone. Get whatever wetness I can. Well, I think my hair is frozen now. Well, we would try to go to the beach and I think we just realized how absolutely unprepared we were. The wind off the ocean is like, you're just unprepared for it. It's freezing.
When we were sitting there on Captain Siggy's boat and he told us that this storm was coming and we had to basically turn around, the worst thing you could do as a freelance photographer, freelance director, is to come back empty-handed. So we were kind of driven by this idea that we wanted to salvage this trip for everybody involved. And so we left against his orders and we basically drove through the West Fjords. And it ended up being the largest storm in 25 years. everything kind of evolved and that storm descended upon us. It was like, call it quits and go home or stay and see what else this place has to offer. And Just starting to see some flickers of the Northern Lights. So we're hoping maybe if we can motivate the guys that they'll get out there and surf. But if those lights come out, it's so hard to sleep when you know what could happen. <laughs> you couldn't design a more challenging shot. Take surfing. You have to deal with the wind, the swell, the tide the athlete, and then you, as a photographer, you have to be ready for really anything. And then all of a sudden you take the Northern Lights, this incredible celestial event that really, it only happens on the coldest and clearest of nights. It's rare to see them low on the horizon or over the ocean at all. At three o'clock in the morning when it's pitch dark, normally you call it a night, but when you have cameras that can shoot at 10,000 ISO, you have to keep going because you're forced to keep up with the technology. Uh, I think this is probably like the fourth or fifth night in a row we've been out trying to get this. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be good to go like this. Rounding up the guys and, and trying to convince them to get a wetsuit on and go out under some of the most brutal conditions you could ever imagine. It's fun, like three to four foot little waves and the guys are out there freezing their asses off, so. Your head goes numb and the wind's hitting you in the back. You could feel your wetsuit just freeze to your body. I think there's some ice still oh, yeah. crystallized here, but it was cold. You have ice. It's all ice, dude. That's so heavy. I don't know, this is the fourth night we've been out here trying to get something a little frustrating. The crew's tired, the surfers are tired. We're all cold as hell, but hopefully we get it. When we were adjusting the settings in the camera, moving between ISO 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000. I can't even see them with my naked eye. The only way I can see them is by looking through this camera. A lot of times trying to adjust our shutter speed, you know, 15th of a second, 24th of a second. So a big key to this was matching the right lens to the right camera. And my favorite combination was essentially the 3514. That lens kind of enabled me to capture really the landscape around plus the northern lights and the wave. We found that the most optimal scenario was going out right when the moon would rise over the hill and it would just send this big beam of light down on the water. And basically we were using the A7S II with the time-lapse app built inside to do all of our time-lapses. We were leaving cameras out like all hours of the night. We got the corn and the stone here. Whoever removes this tripod gets the Northern Lights shot. <laughs> We're attaching this A7S II onto the drone and having to tape over a lot of the lights emitting from the drone so that they wouldn't reflect into the surface of the water. Dude, this is it. This is it right here. If they get a wave. Oh my God, this one. He's going. What? <laughs> When I look back at my career over the years, the highlights, like the most exciting times is when you're like right on the brink of failure. We're using this light on the beach to illuminate the back of the wave and the Northern Lights are doing the rest. And I think it just became that much more real for everybody when we knew that so much effort kind of went into making something like this. Every time I see them, I look and we know we have that experience that like that was something that happened and we all witnessed it. And it's so much more surreal to be able to share it with people all over the world now, even if they weren't there. It's like something you dream about, you know? <laughs> but you never think it's possible. 
I can't believe that just happened, dude. <laughs> I'm like looking at the photos and it feels fake. I don't, honestly, I don't even know if it's real. It, it feels was so dude. unreal. That's a really in inspiring thing to see people go beyond what they thought was possible for themselves and makes me want to push harder and do more. And I think that's part of what made this project a success. You know, all of us had hoped that this film would in some way inspire people to seek outside of the safe and the routine. Where's the fun in just having something guaranteed? All that work you put in, the money, the time, you definitely have some to remember, you know? It's why we do this, why we put up with the struggle and the pain. When you find yourself in those moments, it's like there's no place you'd rather be. Really, it's about embracing uncertainty. When you embrace a moment, you know, that there's a high chance of failure, then that's, that's really the space that you grow in. At the end of the day, I guess you look at the photos you got and the experience you had, and it's, there's nothing else in the world that I'd rather be doing.